The following program is a Town of Colony television production of the William K. Sanford Town Library. Hello and welcome to The Money Factor. I'm Richard Naylor. Our topic today is event fundraising for nonprofits, and we're going to be looking at that through the lens of the American Diabetes Association. Our guests are Kathy Hayes. She's manager of online fundraising and logistics for the American Diabetes Association. And we also are fortunate to have a tour de cure red rider, uh, Mark Val, who's uh, on the keyboard steel cycling team. And they're very successful, and we're really happy to have both of you here. Thank you. Thank you. Let's start with some background. Uh, maybe, uh, Kathy, you would start first because uh, set, a, set the stage a little bit. Uh, American Diabetes Association may be first. Yeah, the American Diabetes Association has been in existence 75 years. We're celebrating the 75th anniversary this year. Um, we, our mission is to uh, prevent and cure diabetes and to support all people living with diabetes and their families. So it's very uh, multi-pronged. We have uh, education, research programs, um, and uh, we help quite a few people locally and nationally. So you're really attacking diabetes from as many sides as you can Correct. Think right. Of. I mean, obviously, we would like a cure, but also we help support people who are living with this disease on a day-to-day -day basis. And then there's a lot of tendency for our culture to probably do things that uh, increase the incidence. Um, yeah, uh, we have uh, programs for people to uh, have to get healthy, make healthy lifestyle choices. Our diabetes.org website is incredible as far as a resource for living healthy. So. We're definitely pushing that as well. Mm -hmm. Great. And Mark, uh, you're a volunteer. Yes. So I, you're a star for <laughs> for the Diabetes Association. Well, there's there's many um, what we call champion fundraisers, and there's a certain level of fundraising, a thousand dollars, that makes you a champion. And and I've been fortunate enough and supported by friends, family, and co-workers to be able to do that the past uh, now four years. Now I know Keyboard Steel has been very uh, involved? Yes. We um, are the number one team for the Saratoga Tour de Cure and number three last year overall in the country. That's a big, well, that's amazing. That is amazing. They raised about $100,000, $108,000, just the one team. So. That is mm -hmm. really impressive. And the total that you raised was? Over $1.3 mm -hmm. Now, I've heard you're successful, so let's brag a little. OK. <laughs> <laughs> we are uh, out of 86 Tour de Cures in the country, which is the American Diabetes Association's signature event. Um, we're number two in the country for fundraising, just behind Napa Valley. So we're right on their coattails there, ready to take over that position. Um, but we're also the number one fundraising event in the Capital District. So. That's, that's mm -hmm. uh, uh, really a great thing. Yeah, we have over uh, 2,500 cyclists that come out on tour day. So that's quite a scene. It's, I... it's incredible. <laughs> Mark can attest to that. Now, I, I think people are always curious. Uh, you've been doing this for a while. This will be my fourth uh, ride cu coming up. And I think it's curious, what gets somebody involved in this? Well, there's different perspectives that, as you know, um, or as you might not know, diabetes has two separate sorts of forms. One is a type 1, uh, in essence, someone whose um, pancreas doesn't make enough insulin, and that's usually younger. You, you find that out when you're younger. And type 2 is generally uh, people older whose insulin is not as resistant. Uh, or is resistant to. So the first one is more genetic, is that correct? Yeah, I, I won't say genetic, but genetic does play a factor in it. Tends to run in families to some extent? Kathy can, could probably answer. It, it can. can. Mm -hmm. okay. it's, it's more, I think, of an autoimmune okay. situation. Correct. Yeah. And so it, it's maybe just a bad accident for someone uh, who develops. Uh, yeah, and the pancreas basically stops producing insulin. So, which is a little different than type 2. Right. And they're, they have to be on insulin, and they have an insulin pump mm -hmm. that they use, and they have to monitor uh, every day, all day. So. Now, you're, 
you've got a nice position, a good, an important position with uh, the Diabetes Association. But uh, talking with you before it, uh, we started, I was kind of surprised to learn that you didn't just walk in off the street no. <laughs> uh, and say, uh, respond to an ad. Right. I started with the Tour de Cure probably, I think it was in 2004 or 5. Um, I liked to cycle. I saw this event and signed up. I did the 50 mile. At that point, it was in still water. Um, and I loved it. They, it. The event itself, you go in, you, you check in, you ride. It's all fully supported. You have rest stops. You know, the, the food is great at lunch and, and things like that. So I kept coming back because it was, it was such a fun event. I'd never done an organized event before. Um, and then when the position opened up, I thought, ah, this event is it's probably pretty easy to, to manage because <laughs> they make it look so easy. But uh, come to find out, there's a lot that goes into it. So it's a challenge. It is. It is. But we have, uh, we're a very small office. There's uh, four of us. Our director is actually a director of Albany and Syracuse. So she's split between the two offices. And uh, we have an incredible uh, committee of volunteers that help run this event. Uh, at, when I said uh, it's a challenge, I, I, I thought, well, my gosh, if you're the second in the country, mm -hmm. you were challenged because oh, there's sure. a lot of people that would like to be second and you'd like to be first. <laughs> right. So you're right. always trying to do well, better. Well, every year we set the bar higher, um, but you know our riders are phenomenal and they're passionate. We have some great stories. You know, Mark's story's a, a great one, and it just inspires people to fundraise. So that's that's pretty good. Mark, was there some of the story that we missed? Well, my uh, my story and, and how I got involved um, was I was in the Navy for 20 years and retired. I was in great physical condition. And then I uh, became what I like to uh, affectionately call a professional couch potato and, and, and got almost up to 300 pounds and was supposed to go on insulin. And uh, after talking to my primary care doctor and realizing as a nurse the issues that would happen, you know, if I didn't get control of it, um, I started, I bought a bicycle about three years ago now, and uh, the Kibbert Steel team captain ended up giving me a, a pamphlet. And uh, from there, I was off. So it's, uh, it's great. I'm off my medications now. That's the Oh, that's fantastic. Thing. And, and I really say in my Tour de Cure uh, website page, I changed it this year a little bit, but you know, getting diabetes actually saved my life because had I not been um, diagnosed with that, I probably would not have taken the effort to try to get in shape and the ride in the So tour. you could have been on the way to a heart attack or something. Absolutely. Right. Now, you're very successful, but you have great needs. Mm -hmm. And could you talk a little bit about what you would like uh, people in the community who have a concern about diabetes to do to help with the problem, to solve the problem. The problem of diabetes? Yes. Or, um, I think getting uh, the education and the tools that, um, that we have posted online, um, right now we're running a a program, it's called Alert Day, and it's, it runs for a couple weeks. It's diabetes.org slash alert. And people can go online and take a risk test, and that test shows all the risk factors. And once you uh, get your results, you can go to your physician and say, hey, I, I had a few of these these risk factors, what should I do? So we're very proactive in, in that regard, and we want people to get educated as to what the risks are, and share that with your family and friends. Now, obviously, you're also trying to cure diabetes. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of trying to make this tour successful, uh, what do you need? The, the biggest thing is the fundraising. Okay, of course. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, the, the Tour de Cure is one of the, it, it is the biggest fundraiser for the American Diabetes Association. It's the only fundraiser we do here in Albany. We don't have any other events. Um, as you can imagine, running an event this large, it does take all year to, to plan this. So we uh, need the passionate riders who are willing to go out and ask for funds on, on their behalf. And we also have our sponsors that are part of the community and want to show the community that they are behind the American Diabetes Association and they want to help their employees with um, taking care of themselves. And Keyboard Steel is one of those companies that have stepped forward. Absolutely. Uh, Robert Kivert and, and the team there is uh, 
and the company has really put a lot up uh, to support the diabetes and, and the American Diabetic Association and uh, the Tour de Cure. They well, do. when you think that you're, what, 9% of their entire... Uh, right. Something like that, maybe yeah. ten. I mean, ten would be rounded off ne mm -hmm. neatly, but that's that's incredibly uh, impressive. Mm -hmm. So, what else? Uh, writers, in terms of writers, uh, now if you were a writer and you didn't know uh, where to go, you just wanted to help. Would they would they be connected to a team or would they just ride? You can do um, both. You can ride as an individual, which I did my first year because I didn't really know anybody. Um, you, we also have a, a national team. Uh, it's Team Red Saratoga, and that's for people who may or may not have diabetes, uh, but they just don't have a team to be part of. So we want people to be part of a team. I think it it's a lot more fun. The camaraderie's there. The fundraising. You know, and uh, they encourage each other to fundraise, so it, it's a, a good thing. So, um, there's also volunteering. I mean, not everybody rides a bike, so we have on tour day over 350 volunteers that come together just for that one day. Now, do you still need volunteers? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So they can go to uh, diabetes.org/saratoga. You can sign up right online. We need everything from breakfast people to cheering to rest stop captains. So we, we've got a lot of needs. Mm -hmm. Now, obviously, there's there's a built-in understanding of the importance of diabetes because, as we were mentioning uh, before the show, you you were saying uh, you sometimes do something with an audience and you say how many have or have had diabetes, and then they'll stand yeah. up and then you'll say who knows somebody, and there and then pretty soon there's almost nobody sitting. Correct. Yeah, it's uh, the new uh, CDC statistics came out last year, and over th almost 30 million people are living with diabetes now um, in the United States. 10% uh, of that is type 1. Um, the rest are, are type 2. So that's uh, why we want people to get educated about diabetes and really know, because not everybody who has diabetes even knows they have diabetes. You don't always feel like you're ill or anything like that, so that you definitely want to be proactive. So do you think the the most people get it, that most people really realize how serious this problem is? Not necessarily. I think it just depends on the person and uh, their physicians, you know, because I think you you don't feel bad all the time. No. I mean, you have diabetes. You can speak more to that, I think. Yeah, I actually, um, until I went in and saw what my numbers were um, and needed to go on insulin, uh, I just kind of live with it. I mean, it wasn't uh, a big deal for me. I, it was. It never came to my consciousness because I never had a problem with it. It's kind of like blood pressure. Right. You know, it, it, unless you have an issue, um, you're not going to know what, what's going on. And you have to have regular checkups with your physician and, and making sure that you get your blood checked for that, along with other tests. Right. And, and so we had an athlete die in Albany a few weeks ago, a 23-year-old, right? He uh, was a state policeman and had just started, but he'd been in the military, mm -hmm. and nobody suspected this. So is it a little like that, that you could have these symptoms and obviously, it's not it's not quite as dramatic in terms of speed, but but once people have to start doing things every day with needles and taking blood tests, uh, I guess the reality comes home. Yeah, I, I, that, and that's when it came home for me when when it was that, and I started checking every day, sometimes four or five times a day, depending on what I was doing that day. Um, and a better analogy would be somebody who had who has high blood pressure and has had it for many many years, and and then has a stroke. You know that would be more you know analogous to somebody who has diabetes, has high blood sugar, and then something happens that makes them aware that they have it. And that's why one of your goals is to get people aware before they need a hammer over the head right, to, yes. right. to, to, to wake up. they don't up. always realize that diabetes is the number one cause of heart disease, mm -hmm. kidney failure, um, amputations. I mean, it, can, it affects your eyes. It, it's very systemic. So Now, you've said that the fundraising part is really how, how um, the Saratoga chapter gets most of its money. Mm -hmm. Do you know, in general, 
Uh, do any of the other chapters do anything else for fundraising? Do they? There are some that do uh, step out walks for diabetes. Um, we don't have a walk so here. So it's a little similar. It's it's very similar. Yep. Um, there's a, a couple in New York State, but mostly for New York, it's the cycling event that's been very well received. Mm -hmm. So for an organization that deals in health, uh, it seems like it fits really well to have some kind of a physical activity mm -hmm. that 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 links so well with with cure because it actually helped helped it, it helped you, Mark, uh, get better. It's my goal every year. It's the reason I started, you know, working out, you know, on a more regular basis, so that I can be, you know, so I can ride that day. So what, what do you do to get the word out to people so that they don't wait until they, they have a, a serious complication? Um, the American Diabetes Association, uh, we highly recommend people going through their physicians. You know, I mean, we can tell them the risk factors and, and things like that. Um, for the Tour de Cure itself, we have a, a subset group of red riders, which is what Mark is a part of. And uh, those are people riding and living with diabetes. And Oh, that's what it's, I see. Yes. <laughs> so uh, they're a, our special group of people that uh, we celebrate on tour day because they're living with this every day. So um, we do put out information to, to them and to others as well for training and nutrition and, and things like that. One of our goals, uh, in addition to really helping you uh, to help us because it's, it's a two-way street. Uh, everybody knows somebody. My father was a diabetic and his mother was a diabetic, so uh, it's not very far from me either. Uh, and I go to the doctor and take care of myself, and right now I can knock on wood, but uh, uh, one needs to keep working at it. Uh, how do you how do you keep growing? I mean, what, I'm, we're, we're thinking of other groups because we also have the American Heart Association mm -hmm. and people need blood and, and many types of blood are short. So one of the goals of the program is also to give people an idea about why you're so successful because I don't believe that people are as generous as they can afford to be. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we could do better with many of our organizations. I think we've been very lucky um, in that we have some really great tour teams. So we have team captains. Um, my gosh, we have uh, how many? 180 teams. So we, these people are really leaders, and they're running their own little subset of of tour, and they inspire their their team to fundraise. And Kibbert's a, a good example where you know they ask. Can you bring one rider on? So everybody just bring one person to, to tour, and it will double the team. So some of the teams have taken that same thing to heart, and they've doubled their teams as well. So that, that's really how we, we do. It's almost like grassroots uh, recruitment. We've also pushed out a lot on Facebook and social media. So that's another And what way have you to, done with that? Um, mostly uh, because your event runs once a year. With social media, you can continue the conversation throughout the year. So we really kind of jumped onto that, and Mark's really good about posting things about tour on, on Facebook, but it, it gets the word out, and you might reach friends or friends of friends, and it kind of goes from there. So. Now, Mark, you said before you changed your site a little bit. Yeah, I, it just, um, the ADA has come up with a great um, website that helps manage our uh, fundraising uh, they have tools on there, like for Facebook, that I use a lot. So I'll go on and I'll post on Facebook. And there's a... There's a um, and now, is that your page or that, is it that's a... That's my page. Okay. It's specifically to me. People who click on that page go to my page and they can donate to me, uh, which goes directly to the ADA. It doesn't come to me. It goes to the ADA directly uh, under the Saratoga Tour de Cure. That's a wonderful idea. Mm -hmm. And there's a spot to put, you know, a little something about yourself. So I changed a little bit that, you know, diabetes is continuing to change my life in ways I never expected, so. So there, there's social media, and I guess we could go more into that because there's no end of it. I, I just wanted to go back for a second to what, to me, seems the most difficult thing, and I, I don't know how many people are the same personality types, but asking people for money, mm -hmm. I, I would think a lot of people, you know, it's one thing to sell something 
uh, you know, I could sell a hammer maybe to people that I thought needed needed a hammer and nail, but I'm not very good at just asking. So how, how do you help people, or what advice can you give? That is something that people some feel people feel uncomfortable <clears throat> doing, asking for money. Um, we we de definitely coach people in that uh, they're not asking for money for themselves to go out and you know buy something. They're asking for on behalf of 30 million people who are living with this disease. So we definitely educate them on what diabetes is if they don't already know. And uh, we give them a lot of tools. The, the online fundraising that Mark was referring to, we give them templates as to what to say or how to say it. We try and make it so it's it's not cumbersome and they can personalize it with their own stories and it makes it a lot easier. I mean, our uh, online fundraising accounts for uh, close to 60% of, of the fundraising that comes So I guess in. different people have a different comfort level with mm -hmm. different tools. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody might send a postcard or somebody might knock Some on a door. Some people still do or, letters, yeah. Uh -huh. Some yeah, people, at, it's still, they have collection cans in, in offices. Um, you know, so old school still is okay. <laughs> and, and in terms of publicity, uh, now you, you're putting out publicity. We're, we're doing some right now, mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure you work diligently in any media you can get. Uh, and Mark, you, you're doing publicity for them. Uh, any other ideas in terms of how people can get the word out so that uh, people are ready for them? Maybe when they show up, maybe they would send an email to their neighbors before they go or something to make it so you're not just showing up and somebody comes to the door in curlers with the dog barking and, oh, and the mother wanting to, you know, and, the, and somebody's cooking in the kitchen. Yeah, they could certainly do that. I mean, and then there's a lot of civic groups, too, that, that can do fundraisers. Uh, some of the teams might do their own little um, dinners or, or events, their own events. Um, to, to fundraise so too. do you so get any civic groups as uh, we have teams? some teams yeah we have the Boy Scouts have have a, a group but we've had some schools in the past so there are some clubs mm -hmm. what kind of skills do you need in terms of if you were looking for volunteers are there any skills that you think uh, the American Diabetes Association especially needs we're always looking for uh, people to help with our logistics team, which is a team that I'm on. We uh, look for riders, specifically cyclists who want to ride along with other riders and kind of just keep the safety going, you know, because some, some people are there and they um, haven't ridden in a while, and it's a, it's a great social event. So we just want to kind of keep them safe, and so we definitely need, need people like that. But just about anything, I mean, if we have people who do breakfast, which is cutting fruit to um, clean up crews. We're always looking for that. You know, anything and everything. Well, it makes me think it might be interesting to go through your day a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, it's one day. One day. And when? when is it? Um, we have five different routes that start at staggered times. I see. The first route starts at 7 a.m., and that's the century. They're, they're 100 June, miles. June 7th. June 7th. Right 7th at, is an easy number. Yeah, and it's right at Saratoga Springs High School. Okay. Uh, and uh, basically the rider would come in and check in, pick up a, a prize if they've earned a prize, because we do that for fundraising as well. There's breakfast ready if they need something to fuel up before they go. And then we have the, the start line, depending on the route, that can be from three, four hundred up to six hundred people starting at, at the one time. So, and I know Mark can talk about what it's like to be on the line as a Red Rider as well. In the yeah, front. please. <laughs> it's very exciting. They actually have all the Red Riders. There's a specific jersey that we get that identifies us. So you as have a, Red a, Rider. a, um, a team jersey? Or? Well, we also, uh, I do have a team jersey with Kibber Steel, but on that day, I wear the Red Rider jersey that designates me as someone who rides with diabetes. And it is a red cycling jersey, and there's shorts that go with it, depending on, you know, how much money you raise. But, but the jersey is, you know, if you're riding, you get the jersey. It's the red jersey. Um, and they bring us all to the front, and one of the things they talk about is the saying, go Red Rider, go. And they make a big deal of that. And as people see you out on the route, for me, generally when they're passing me, uh, they'll say, go Red Rider, go. And it really helps. I've been you know, struggling up a hill and hear that go Red Rider, go. And I say, well, I can do, I can do a little I'm bit not more. not going to slack right now. I can do right now. I mean, somebody's watching. <laughs> <They're> watching. <laughs> somebody's encouraging me. Right. So it, the day of it is so 
I mean, I'm getting emotional just thinking about it because how emotional that day is. Everybody is there to support people who have diabetes, and it's the enthusiasm is contagious, I would say. And the, you have to go at least watch if you're not going to volunteer a ride. The, the small staff that they have, it is an amazing job how well organized and how uh, fluid the day runs, at least from the outside looking in. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure on the inside they're running around, and, right. but it is an amazing job that they do with such a small staff. That's awesome. Yeah. If somebody wanted to give a donation and they didn't know somebody riding, they could go to um, diabetes.org slash Saratoga, and they could donate directly to the tour. Okay, to and so that would count within your oh, fundraising. Oh, sure, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, anything else that we're leaving out? Um, you well, built this up over many years. Yes, yeah, next year's the 25th year for the Tour to Cure. Have you ever had a down year? Not really. <laughs> We've grown every year, and I think it just goes to show the that this area in the Capital District is, is so amazing and uh, we have an incredible crew of volunteers that really help make us. I mean, we meet every month with, with volunteers. They're, they're really part of our staff when it comes down to it because they help us with every aspect of the tour. Now, there's a lot of companies out there. I was just thinking, mm -hmm. uh, can anybody donate something from the company, like an in-kind, sure. anything you need? Um, we're always looking the for... The bicycle. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we get uh, we try and get as much donated as we can, uh, of course, to, to so we did, don't have to pay anything out of pocket. And we do have some big uh, uh, sponsors. Mazone Hospitality donates mm. lunch to for you know almost 3,000 people. So it's a, a big it's undertaking. A big lunch. Yeah, yes. But we need anything from fruit to bread to, for all our rest stops. Saratoga Water supplying all the water for us this year. So, so maybe a company could call you and say, Absolutely. What, what could I do? I, yes, I do yes. this. Mm -hmm. You know, when, you, when I said bicycle, I was thinking kind of simply, but then not everybody has a bicycle. Some people, right. maybe they rode a lot and they don't, you might get a little sore and maybe you don't have to ride too far, but what would you do for somebody? Are there any way to rent a bike? Well, or? we also have a three-hour indoor spin event, which is um, sponsored by Vent Fitness, and they run this three-hour class, so you can go from one to three hours, so whatever you okay. want to do. Um, I believe it's 150 bikes set up, and you can, you can be indoors, so if you're uh, if you want to do that, you can you sign up just like you would as a regular tour rider, and you would just choose station bike as your route so and maybe yeah. somebody could borrow a bike from someone oh yeah yeah you can check with some of the bike shops they they may have some bikes or even that... just a rental yes yeah mm -hmm. well let's go back over the details before we wrap up uh, June 7th, 7th yep, easy. Sunday Sunday June 7th and what's a deadline for uh, uh, getting involved let's say you're a team or you well, we're always saying the sooner the better. You know, right, it gives right. you more time to fundraise. There's a $200 fundraising minimum um, for everybody in order to ride, whether you're on a team or okay, that's an that's individual. Important. Yep. Um, right now, it's a $25 registration fee. And if somebody wants to donate 200 they can ride. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And we do have people that do that. So So that would yeah. be the person I don't, I hate asking people <laughs> for money. I'll just and some people do that, that. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot of companies out there that also do matching gifts. So if you donate 100 they donate 100 and you're good to go. So, Mark, are you in good shape? Are you ready to go? <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm getting there. i got a couple of places I go to work out. And... Uh, I had surgery about a year and a half ago on my shoulder, and, and uh, so I couldn't work out for a long time for that. And, and then once you get out of it, it's tough to get back in. But yeah, I'll be ready to go. I, I do want to say one quick thing. Please. Um, I'm also the chair of the uh, subcommittee for Red Riders, and, and we're trying to, to encourage more people with diabetes to become involved. Uh, if they can contact the office, uh, reach out, even if they're not sure if they want to ride or not. Now, maybe they don't have email, so you want to say your number and we'll put it up? Yep, it's 518-218-1755. Uh, okay. And, and we'll connect them with the program uh, to help them ride. There's a new program this year. 
um, that Denise is going to be helping out with, uh, and a few of us experienced riders. There's a spin classes that try to get you in shape and understand how to actually pedal a bicycle, and then and then we'll sponsor some rides if the weather ever get no when the weather ever gets nicer. <laughs> I think it will. Gotcha. So that's a really great thing because now they're giving to the cause, and they're actually helping themselves. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the training's all free. So, I mean, that's <laughs> with Advent Fitness, they are sponsoring these free spin classes for for this new Red Rider initiative. It's a so, great way yeah. to, yeah, it's a wonderful way to spend your money and, and get a lot of benefit. Mm -hmm. Kathy and Mark, I want to thank you so much. I wish you the best of luck on this. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the show, that you Go to their website and make a donation or take part in the Tour de Cure on June 7th. And otherwise, have a great week. Take care.